All right, folks, we're going to be talking about some more PlayStation 5 issues. And it, it's, it's strange because I've been actively looking for um, Xbox Series X issues. Uh, and while they exist, they they don't really seem to be that big of a deal. Some of it's just some software bugs. Uh, we're not noticing a lot of hardware issues at this point. But we're actually seeing the PlayStation 5. And maybe there's just more of them out there, so there's just a higher amount of people that are that are going to have failure rates and this is of note this happens at launches all the time systems launch errors are found issues occur and they get fixed okay so this is not indicative of what your experience of playstation 5 will be next year or the year after when the slim launches because let's be honest there's going to be a slim uh that it's not indicative of what your experience might be and some of you guys might not have any of these issues we can't possibly know what the overall uh, issues are and the number of people that have them. It, you know, it's, that's why some people dismiss even Joy-Con Drift with Nintendo because we don't really have an accurate idea of how many people are experiencing Joy-Con Drift. Just like Drift, in case you didn't know, is actually a huge issue with DualShock 4 controllers. But again, we don't have a big measure of, you know, how big of an issue it is. We just have lots of people saying four or five controllers in a row have the problem. All right. So this is a, a concern that some people are having right now. Now, this title is wrong. Okay, this is over at NeoGAF. Uh, I know some people aren't, aren't fans of NeoGAF anymore, and that's fine. Uh, but it doesn't really change the fact what the user is talking about. Now, I think the user is talking about something they don't really know uh, much about. Uh, it says Sony really cheaped out on the PSUs, didn't they? And if you go through and read this, he's talking about coil line. So he says, you know, on November 19th, you know, got, got the system quiet as hell. No fan or coil. No, November 22nd, so, uh, some humming starting to happen uh, when you're playing Miles Morales 25. Uh, it gets even more audible, uh, especially when playing Miles Morales. No other games are having issues. On uh, the 27th, coil one evolves again, this time easing itself. Not only the Miles Morales, but Spider-Man Remastered, Astro, AC Valhalla, basically anything he's playing on the system at this point. When I power it on, it's still not a major annoyance, but it now varies in sound from app to app. Uh, coil wine uh, evolves tenfold and now starts to get slightly louder and the fan starts to kick whenever I start a game. Pretty audible noises, etc., etc. December 1st, coil wine reaches a new phase. I didn't record my own, blah, blah, blah. So he, he, he puts up a video of, of, of someone that sounds exactly like his, and we'll just take a listen here. So obviously, if you weren't wearing headphones, maybe you couldn't tell. And I know sometimes I have some uh, noises going on with my microphones, although there shouldn't be any for this video. I tried to make sure that I had the best noise profile possible because obviously we're dealing with a noise issue here. Uh, and this has been a, an issue being reported on for a while. There's plenty of people who don't have issues, but there's some that do. And now we know that there are different types of fans in some of these some fans in some of these systems have like 17 fins or 19 fins and other ones have 22 to 24 fins so for some reason some manufacturing lines are using better fans the more fans there are the quieter it's going to be the less uh it has to work to push air so that could be an issue could be fan noise uh also someone pointed out in this thread if you if you scroll down that a difference between the xbox series x which by the way we're not hearing about any noise or coil line complaints with the Xbox Series X. And it's notable because these two platforms are using the same technology. All right? They're using virtually the same chips running at different speeds. But here is here, here, here's a, a big difference. And this is something we want to talk about. This is this is a look inside the power supply of the PlayStation 5. All right, you'll note um, you know, I I think these points are kind of just randomly put in here. Um, I don't know that they have that much of, of an impact. They're trying to, you know, no gray goop equal, equals coil line. This one says gray goop, uh, no coil line. But power supplies do give off coil line. It is very, I mean, coil line is just uh, vibrating of electricity. Obviously, power supplies are the most likely factor uh, when you consider this or anything that draws power, um, like the whole system. So, uh, transistors on the board and all that jazz can cause that coil line. Well, Microsoft did put in some of this gray goop. Now, this gray goop, it, it's non-conductive. Uh, it, it's basically just a damper. Uh, and so any parts that might be vibrating 
uh, whether it's a coil here, whether it's it's some vibrations between these two things here, uh, here, etc. Wherever they put this gray goop is technically a method to dampen potential coil line. So it's very cheap. It probably costs them what ten cents, maybe less per system to put this in in the Series X power supply. But this could be a major difference between the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X. This little small touch by Microsoft could be why we're not really having coil line issues with the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5. Again, we're speculating because not every system has it, and sometimes it doesn't have it right away, but it develops over time. But there is something else that we need to talk about. Because coil line is one thing, and, you know, it, it, it's kind of hit or miss uh, on what's happening there. How about this? How about the fact that there are enough people complaining about the DualSense having drift? Remember I just talked about Joy-Con drift? Apparently the DualSense controller is using the same control sticks as the DualShock 4. And the DualShock 4 has a ton of drift for a lot of people. So people are experiencing drift. So people are talking about ways, just like with the Joy-Cons, to, you know, do something about it. Resetting your controller and cleaning your analog sticks out and taking off the thumb grips and making sure nothing is blocking the signal in case it's signal related turn the bluetooth on and off make sure you have updates installed open a warranty claim if it's a you know it, it's just going through the process the same thing that we deal with joy cons um on on, on dual sense drift but apparently playstation 5 controllers are drifting uh this is a problem i've seen reported on reddit and twitter so it, i don't know how many customers it's affecting obviously enough that i'm noticing but again uh could be minor what's not minor is the design of the system so here you are seeing a video by gamers nexus he put this out you know, a little over a week ago, uh, he is uh, one of the foremost people at tearing apart technology and understanding how it works. And he did temp some temperature testing because ultimately, if you want to know if the design of a system is good, you are going to want to test the temperatures. Now, what you're seeing here is that he took he took temperatures on two different memory modules. Uh, one of those memory modules happened to be underneath the heatsink. Another memory module ended up not being underneath the heatsink. And about half of the memory modules, which you know we're, we're talking RAM, we're talking uh, we're talking SSD stuff, um, are not um, really touching any sort of real heatsink. There's some light touching of a steel plate, which is not doing a good job dissipating heat you are seeing a 93.3 degree delta with the side panels on. This um, this 88.6 is with both side panels off. And I talked about this uh, before PlayStation 5 came out and people were just killing me. I kept telling people that to me, at first glance, after the teardown of the PlayStation 5 happened, that the ventilation wasn't good enough. I don't care how big or the heat sink is, or how big the fan is, if the heat has nowhere to go, it's not going to do anything. And it certainly looks like to me that, well, guess what? Um, it's being proven with actual temperature probes on the actual uh, chips. You know, not, not, not talking about well, temperature taken with a thermal camera. In fact, he explains in this video why temperature taken with a thermal camera on the outside of the system is useless, completely useless. You're just getting the temperature of the plastic. The plastic is not dissipating heat, okay? So these are what these ma the, these modules are actually running at. 93.3 degrees is scarily close to the delta for a memory chip. And he notes that this is actually on the casing around the memory chip and based on their own testing over time with various GPUs, some that give you direct access to the chip itself, um, temperature probe, he knows that inside of the casing, it's usually 5 to 10 degrees higher, meaning this memory module here could be running at 103 to 108 degrees. That is very scary that is point of failure scary that is crashing ram crashing ssd type of scary that is high failure rate scary um and don't just take my word for it and looking at this chart let's see what gamers nexus himself actually had to say about this to six degrees off of the memory hotspot thermals is more significant at this end of the scale, and we see that same five degree benefit across the rest of the case. The design, we think, would benefit from some venting slats cut into the side of the panels, and this could probably even be done in a way that still maintains the PS5's attempt at a cool design aesthetic, and could be incorporated with this sort of futuristic motif that they're going for. 
That large fan doesn't generate enough pressure, ultimately, and that combined with poor heat sinking on the memory side of the PCB, which is opposite of the silicon, well, the SOC silicon side, is what's causing most of the PS5's issues. Ambient was within a range of about one degree Celsius for this test, so these numbers are about as on point as we can get it. Let's add one more line to that chart. This line contains the average hotspot data at steady state collected by a thermal camera with the stock configuration as measured when pointed at the side, the hottest side, of the PS5, which is typically the exhaust area. There are a number of flaws taking a thermal measurement of a closed box with a thermographic image and assuming it tells you anything useful. This is not really valid data, it doesn't tell us anything, but uh, we wanted to present it anyway. The chief of the issues is that this only tells you the temperature of the plastic, which isn't actually useful unless you're trying to determine if the plastic is outside of a spec and potentially going to incur some sort of damage. All of the heat is trapped inside of the box, and it's not being exhausted properly, nor is it being conducted properly for some of these memory modules. So really you want to see the exhaust really hot, because that means the air is getting out. And even then, since we're only imaging the plastic temperature, that's still of limited use. So then, the thermographic image produces data that looks like this. Over a sufficient period of time, like several hours, the case will eventually get a bit hotter, but because the plastic is mostly isolated from contacting the housing where the heat is being generated, you're still going to be seeing this significant delta where it's just not useful data. It'd be like if you pointed a thermal camera at a sealed computer case and then tried <laughs> to derive CPU temperature from it. Ignore- Yeah. And he goes on in this video to uh, th do some th some further tearing down, showing, showing his methodology, the temperature probes, how he calibrated the temperature probes, um, and, and why uh, the memory modules are having issues. So. Well, when, when you dive into uh, some of his breakdown here, he'll show you um, that uh, there, there, there's parts of the memory modules, you know, like here he's pointing out how like it, it doesn't really make good contact with the plate in the first place. Um, he'll, show you, he'll show you that it's not really making um, contact with the heat sink. Uh, where, where does he show that? I think that's, that's back here. Uh, where basically uh, one memory module is right underneath this heat sink. Now there's like eight or eight of them or something like that. Um, so, and, and one memory module is like sitting over here. There's another one here. There's another one here, another one over here, another one over here. So there's like four of them that go around this heat sink. And then four of them that are, well, really one here, I guess two or three of them that are actually underneath this heat sink here that are probably getting good thermals. Basically there's a bunch of memory modules that aren't dissipating heat. Well, in addition, um, it, he noted that when you look at the way the fan spins, the fins here are great. Because the the wind is going to blow in this direction. You follow my mouse here. I know it's a little small on your guys' screen. The fan's gonna blow. You know, it goes like this. It blows and it blows like this through these fins. So these fins are facing the right direction. But when you're blowing the fan down this way, right? You're spinning the wind like this. It's it's going like this. It's going like this. Even if it's going like this, right? It doesn't matter which way that wind is is coming from. Whether it's coming out this way or this way, these fins are not pointing in the right direction to actually take advantage of that heat from the fan so the fan is actually hitting the edge here and it's just kind of spanking it and then going over the top spanking it instead of going through the fins which is what you want air to do you want it to flow through the fins it's not uh and this is notably different than the xbox series x design where, where the air directly is pulled up through the fins so Again, if you want to know why the Xbox Series X is not having thermal issues or less coil wind, there's a lot of things that are design flaws that I noticed but didn't have the technical know-how or at least I didn't have a PlayStation 5 in hand to really fully explain it to you guys on um, what's going on. So the PlayStation 5 has design flaws. The PlayStation 5 needs to get redesigned in some way internally. It's not going to take much. It has really bad ventilation. I pointed this out. People want to scream bias and rip my head off. Guys, I'm not being biased. I'm still buying a PlayStation 5 as soon as I have the money and get my hands on one. I'm still giving away a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, or Nintendo Switch in January. I wouldn't be giving away a PlayStation 5 potentially and buying a PlayStation 5 for myself if I thought it was a crappy system. I don't think it's a crappy system. I do think it's not designed that well. People were impressed when the teardown happened, and I don't know what they're impressed by. 
It's not a good design. It's a horrible design. It's one of the worst designs I have seen when it comes to these systems. And Xbox isn't any better in some regards. Yes, the Series X and Series S are brilliantly designed for heat dissipation. However, we know that that hasn't always been the case with Microsoft. Red Ring of Death, Xbox 360, horrible design. Okay? Absolutely horrendous design. So I'm not like trying to slam Sony here just because they're a Sony platform or it's PlayStation. I'm just pointing out the facts of the situation. The PlayStation 5 is not a very well designed system. People look at look at that massive heatsink, but the air doesn't flow over it correctly. The heatsink isn't actually cooling all the memory modules. Some of the memory modules are hitting deltas that can cause failure rates. You're gonna see a lot of PlayStation 5s in the next year start to have memory failure codes, start to crash. Some PlayStation 5s are already crashing because it's overheating. The PlayStation 5 is not good at dissipating heat right now. The PlayStation 5 is not designed well. There are some minor changes that they could make that could massively improve this, but they haven't made those changes at this time. So yes, your PlayStation 5 is probably fine for now, but a year from now, two years from now, when it just gets out of warranty, I don't know. I can't guarantee your memory modules are going to last. Those temperatures are not good. The NAND flash is a little bit less concerning than NAND flash memory. Um, NAND flash likes to run hot. If you cool NAND flash too much, uh, it, it can actually be detrimental to performance. But memory modules, RAM does not like to run hot. RAM likes to be cool. Why do you think uh, there's such giant heat sinks on RAM modules? You know, you can buy RAM modules without it, but the RAM modules that actually perform well have heat sinks on them. Okay, there's a reason for that. There's memory modules here that basically have no heat sinks and no heat dissipation at all. And uh, that's a problem. In addition to the fact that based on the temperatures, uh, the, t the heat's not escaping the chassis very well. And when you take off the side panels, everything drops by five degrees. Everything across the board drops by five degrees without the side panels on. That clearly means the side panels are choking the air. And there's probably even further choking. Some of the plastic shroud, if they would put slits in some of that black plastic shroud, it would probably dissipate heat even more with the side panels off. So again, PlayStation 5 is not a very well-designed system for cooling. It's still a really interesting design. It's still um, maybe the most next-gen of systems in terms of what it's doing with the UI. Obviously, it has games. You know, that's the big thing. Why do we buy these systems to play games? But it's not perfect. There's literal design flaws. Hey, I'm a Nintendo guy. The Switch has design flaws too. We've bitched and bitched about Joy-Cons. I've talked about the plastic uh, locks, how that shouldn't be, that definitely shouldn't be, be in there at all. Um, there doesn't seem to be too many uh, issues with the uh, heat dissipation per se, but, you know, could it be better? Could it be more efficient? Maybe. Uh, obviously, they were using chips that were easy to hack. That was a you know Nvidia's fault there. So there's just a lot of things across many platforms that have uh, bad designs. But uh, so far, anyways, the Xbox Series X slash S is very well designed in comparison. But of course, Microsoft, after what happened with the Red Ring of Death, um, they've been very conscientious of good cooling designs. Hence the vapor chambers and all that. No amount of liquid metal on the chip can fix the fact that you're literally not cooling certain mem memory modules. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel RoboGents from the Center Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.